do your wheel when you get home, but four verses, four or five verses out of that sixth chapter says they set out in ranks by hundreds and by fifties, and when he taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them and the two fishes divided him among them all and they did all eat and were filled and they took up twelve baskets full of fragments and of the fishes and they that did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men. Yeah. Now, I know we're still in, in, in this pandemic era, so just turn to your neighbor, you gotta get close to him, but just ask the question, are you ready for a miracle? Are you ready for a miracle? And I wanna let you know that the situation, the season, the time, the ground is ready for a miracle. You may have a seat. Are you ready for a miracle? In the gospel as recorded by Mark, Jesus is portrayed as a servant on the moon. He is responsive to the will of the Father. And the symbol for Mark is the ox, which is representative of a servant the beast of burden. And the title is Paton Markon, which means according to Mark. Today's text is actually part two of Mark, entitled Opposition to the Servant. Growing opposition out of all that he's done and all they have seen him do still the people were opposed in some way to Jesus. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, the fact that uh, they were uh, in this chapter Jesus is rejected at Nazareth at home by the neighbors and friends Rejected in his own country. Rejected and his wisdom was astonishing to some folks and to others it was an affront. Therefore he could not do much at home. I know y'all heard that before that sometimes the least you can do is at home. Uh, because I, I always tell folks that uh, a child, they don't know me too much more than June. That's all they know. They can't sometimes get past June or Miss Grady or Miss Leland's son. So all he could do most at home was lay hands on a few folks. The twelve are sent out to serve. And then Herod, Herod means uh, uh, heard of Jesus and is afraid and thinking that it is John the Baptist risen from the dead he recalls his killing by beheading John the Baptist y'all yeah. remember the story oh, yeah. that, that, that John told him it ain't right for you to take your brother's wife and so he <laughs> hallelujah so actually, actually, uh, the wife was upset and when her daughter was promised whatever she wanted, she said, tell me you want John's head on a platter. Yes, sir. And that's what happened. That's what happened. The twelve returned. And Jesus invites them to rest, go over on the other side. And as they departed to a desert place, the people saw me, and they knew Jesus, and they knew him by his reputation. Yes, sir. And as they went by 
many things. And as happened, time rolled on, the day rolled on, morning rolled to no noon, rolled to afternoon, afternoon rolled to evening, and late in the day, uh, the setup, uh, they were a long ways from home. It was late in the day, and the disciples came to Jesus. And the disciples came to Jesus with a kind of selfish outlook, kind of selfish attitude and said, look, there's a lot of folks here. We ain't got nothing. They tired. They hungry. And what we really need to do is send them away. So number one, that was a great problem. And in our lives, according to Dr. Webster, a problem of complexity, difficulty, and if you live in this world any length of time, if you ain't had no problems. Problems are on their way. And I tell folks all the time, does not matter who you are, where you are, what you are, problems will come. And you got you, you got some problems. I don't, I don't care how much money you got in the bank. Rich folks got problems. Poor folks got problems. I don't care what you got in the bank. I don't care. Well, I don't care how much education you got. Your problems will come. So here they were, hungry, a long ways from home, and the problem arose. Couldn't get back home right then, and they needed some food. And the disciples responded, well, send them away. And sometimes when folks get through with us, they are, sometimes their only response here, send them away. Get back the best way they can. Get it the best way you can. And, 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 and I, I thought about the songwriter who said, have you the mountain that you can't talk through? Have you in the rivers? God specializes in things that are impossible. And he'll do what no other power can do. First of all, there was a demand for which there was no supply. Food for the multitude, but none was available. There's always a demand, yeah. and sometimes there's no supply. Right. Sickness and disease, no cure. Marriage failures, no help. Job closures or layoffs, no one knows why. School turmoil, no answer. Depression, repression, recession, seemingly no hope. And then secondly, not only was there a demand for which there was no supply, there was a grim prediction. What do we have? Taking account of what we got in stock. Well, five loads. Yeah. 
but I hear folks talk all the time about, you know, when the preacher came to eat, the children had to sit in the back to wait till the preacher got to eat, and sometimes they stayed long enough to eat again. And they had to eat what was left. Yeah. They said sometimes it was, you know, the chicken legs, chicken back, chicken feet. But, but, but look here, all ate. And then not only did all eat, all were filled. Uh, and not only did all eat, not only were all filled, but there was some leftovers. Twelve baskets of leftovers. And they took an inventory, they did an inquiry, they took a census and said about 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look here, look here. There was a demand for which there was no supply. They'd been out all day listening to Jesus. No way to get food. All right. A long way from home. Yeah. A grim prediction. We ain't got nothing. One boy, mama thought enough to sit and listen. So I didn't even cry. Three little fish, five father in law. Nothing. But in the hands of Jesus, that's a miracle. Any of y'all been in a situation where it looked like what? Nothing. But Jesus took it, blessed it, and delivered it. What a God would say. Are you ready? For a miracle. Everybody ate. Everybody was feeding. And then there was some leftovers. Yes. Yes. We right now, United States right now, the church family right now, individual Christian right now, you are ready, primed, and pumped for a miracle. Got off in Bethlehem, wrapped himself in human flesh. 
mice, laid in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes, hung around here, I tell you, 33 and a half years, doing nothing but good. Everywhere he went, a miracle transpired. Thank God for being a miracle worker. Thank God for healing the sick. Thank God for giving sight to the blind. Thank God for even raising the dead. He's a great maker. He's a miracle worker. How many know he's a miracle worker? Said he's a doctor. Never have lost a patient. Lonely. He's a friend in a midnight hour. Able. Able. He do all things but fail. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Jesus. My elder brother. Jesus. Raised him. Arrested him. Tried him. Jesus. Carried him from courthouse to courthouse. Jesus. But he never said a mumbling word. Jesus. Change it into a new form. And now, uh, 
blood for him, God. And we invite you to come and be a part of this fellowship. Choir come to us, we invite you to come. Come, my blood is still running on your back. Come, while you still have an opportunity. The Bible says you need to seek the Lord while 